Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Let's go ahead and move into game number two. And this is the Sunday afternoon game. Uh, 5.40 p.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone on Fox. The Green Bay Packers go out west to Levi Stadium in Santa Clara to face the San Francisco 49ers. Same line here, seven and a half. Uh, total is 45, so a whole touchdown less in this game. Um, in week 12, the 49ers beat the Packers 37 to 8. Uh, Aaron Rodgers in that game, 20 out of 33, which sounds pretty good, except he only had 104 total yards passing. He had one touchdown, but the yards per pass, 3.2. That ain't good. Nope. That's terrible. Um, the way that the Packers can beat the 49ers, and, and don't get me wrong, that, that Week 12 matchup means nothing here. Um, the 49ers allowed 124.2 rushing yards per game. That is the eighth most in the NFL. Not not great. No. Not great. So that defensive line that they've got that, that we've been harping on all season, they're great at a pass rush. I was about to say, they're built, they're built to beat a pass rush. The Packers need Aaron Jones to play big in this game. Uh, if, if the Packers do win, it, it'll be because of uh, Jimmy G. It'll be because they have found a way to confuse him. To You, you need him to make mistakes. And he will. Stay in this. Um, He's going to give you the ball. Well. He has almost every game this year. Yeah. I mean, what did he have against the Vikings? Was it two turnovers? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, nope. Well, it might have been a fumble, but he definitely only. What, one interception? Yeah, just one interception. One interception, and then I think it was one fumble. Bless you. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I think it was. One more time. There you go. <laughs> I think it was one fumble, one intercept, but it was two turnovers. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. They will They will probably do that. The one thing that the Packers do have going for them, one, they've got the much more experienced quarterback. Uh, but the other side of it is their defense is pretty good against the run. And San Francisco builds everything off of being able to run the football. Now, in that first mat uh, matchup, things went screwy early and very quickly. And the 49ers were able to run the football, but a lot of it was – the, the game went sideways on Green Bay early. So I think this is a situation where the stats lie, and the stats lie badly. Okay. When Green Bay played teams that could run the football well, which they didn't play many because not a lot of teams ran the football this year. What, and they didn't play a lot of good teams. Yes. But, like, even the Chargers are a bad team. Chargers know how to run the football. Yeah. They're built to run the football and because they've got a, an old man quarterback and, the, you know, whatever. Um, when they played the 49ers, they, the teams that they shut the rundown on were teams that couldn't run the ball on anybody. The Bears didn't run the ball on anybody. You know why? Because nobody's afraid of Mitchell Trubisky. Agreed. You know, the Lions didn't run the ball on hardly anybody. Like, they shut down great run. I mean, the Cowboys, they got Ezekiel Elliott. They got a great offensive line. But I can't explain why they just chose to not run the football this year. But they didn't run on anybody. And that's the situation that I'm at is I think Kyle Shanahan's offense and his zone blocking scheme is to a point where you could be the greatest run defense in, in, in the game. I, I think they're running on you. I just do. I could be wrong on that, and Green Bay might shut them down, but but I absolutely think I'm losing it. <laughs> that uh, I, I think I think that they can run on anybody. Green Bay held San Francisco. <laughs> Luckily, everybody can actually see the dog. Now. I know. They can see him. They now. can actually see Maui. Um, Green Bay held the 49ers to only 112 yards rushing on 22 attempts. Now, that was still five yards in, per attempt uh, in that game. The biggest problem was Jimmy G was 14 out of 20 for 227 yards. I mean, he averaged over at almost 10 yards a pass. Yeah. And, I mean, you can't win like that. I mean, it's just impossible. So my my issue with that situation, though, is I would like to see when he was throwing the football because I know early in that game they didn't open the game throwing. And was he able to get those passes because the run game just opened up all those passing lanes? Well, I'll tell you this: I remember that game, and I think they just gashed him early. 
and they well, gashed I mean, they them were, off. They were up seven to nothing to start off with yeah, because it, quick. like Green Bay got the ball and fumbled the ball on their own two yard line, and San Francisco's up seven nothing. Yeah, and then a, a couple more drives go by. It's ten to nothing. Uh, it's thirteen to nothing, and then Green Bay goes you know three and out, and it is a three play sixty one yard drive, and let's see, it was Debo Samuel. Yep. Uh, from Jimmy Garoppolo for 42 yards to make it 20 to nothing. And that's before the half. Like, it was 23 to nothing at the half. Like, they they hit massive plays. If you're Green Bay, you can stop the run, but you can't make the mistakes. That's right. Like, that's, that's right. the biggest thing. That's right. What do you think here? You riding Rodgers? Man, I think that San Francisco has the most complete team left in the playoffs right now. I agree. But yeah, I think this I is going to be a close game. I thought they started the year or started the playoffs with the most complete team. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I think I'm going to roll Packers plus seven and a half. I, I think that the 49ers will find a way to win this game. But the 49ers, towards the end of the season, found a way to win close games. Right? I mean, they beat Arizona by three. They beat Seattle by five. They beat you know, and yeah, they whipped up on the Vikings last week. But you and I both have talked about that game. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, I, we also think that Green Bay has been fraudulent all year. And at some point in time, they play a good team and they get their butt whipped. It's, I thought they showed up well last week, but I also think that that Seattle team was running on fumes. That Seattle team was fluky as hell. Yeah, they they were they were running on fumes. I, uh, I do really like this Packers defense. Like, I, I think this is the first time in seven, eight years that the Packers – have built their team on something other than Aaron Rodgers. And the problem is, is pressure, o- offensively, they have one man, and it's not Rodgers. Well, I mean, they, they got Adams and they got Jones. And they they are set up on offense almost the same way that the Titans are. There's just no way on earth that the 49ers are not going to be ready for Adams. They're just not. He's not going to be wide open the entire game like he was against Seattle. I have no idea what the defense was doing in Seattle. I don't know. Well, Seattle doesn't have the uh, the secondary that the 49ers do. But he, it, uh, what even the secondary situation? Like, they were running this weird zone, and he was just finding a hole sitting down in it and getting it. You know how many uh, how many possessions there were in the second half of that uh, I bet, of that Green Bay-San Francisco I bet game? almost none. I bet that was one of the quickest games we've had all year. Oh, the was, Green Bay-San Francisco game? Yeah. Oh, no. I thought you were talking about the playoff game last no, year. No, Green Bay-San Francisco earlier this year, there were only six possessions. San Francisco went three and out. Green Bay had a thirteen, and that was that took two and a half minutes off. Green Bay had a thirteen play, sixty five yard drive that took eight and a half minutes. After that, to make it twenty three to eight, and then immediately, San Francisco turns back around, has a two play, seventy five yard drive that took less than a minute. And I mean, it was a let's see, George Kittle passed from Jimmy Garoppolo, sixty one yard touchdown. Like, see, there's as great as that defense is. There's nobody that can guard Kittle. I agreed. And if they can run the ball and he can get open, then then those other guys, Debo, those other guys are going to get open. Green Bay, after that touchdown to make it 30-8, to eight, Green Bay had a 12-play, 44-yard, six-and-a-half-minute drive that ended on downs. This is the issue with them, right. though. If they get down early, they can't come back. Yeah, they They're not the Green Bay of old. No. I mean, but you talked about Tennessee not being able to come back if they get down early in their game. Hell, this team, Tennessee has a way more explosive offense than this team. Which is crazy to think about, isn't it? And And at least Tennessee's playing a defense that has played much better than previous years, but they're still vulnerable. Yeah. Green Bay's going up against what's probably the best defense left in the playoffs. I think I'm not going Packers. And we're also also talking about a coaching matchup where, come on, dude. Come on. uh, Against Matt LaFleur. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm taking I'm I know taking I'm selling him. I'm taking 49ers minus seven and a half. But I've been a Kyle believer since day one. That's the only guy. Cleveland's had a bunch of guys that came through their system that could have gotten the job there that left. He's the only guy that got out the door that I'm mad about. He's the only guy that ever left the building that I'm mad about. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, you uh you're on the 49ers. Oh yeah. This is the one I feel I feel great about. 
Yeah, that makes sense. I really like, do. When, when you really break down I felt the great about it last week. I, you know, I, is, and you know how much we like the Vikings. It just didn't matter. This is the best team in the playoffs. Yeah. I, this uh, team should win the Super Bowl. You know what's crazy? The 49ers would probably rather – I know it's weird to say they'd rather see the lesser seed team. They're built to beat the Titans. They're going to struggle with the Chiefs. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, a guy like – a great quarterback can cut them up. There was a – But if you're not a, a great quarterback, you can't cut them up. There was an article by – like done on ESPN about advanced analytics. And the guy for Green Bay – Let's see. What's the guy's name? Zadarius Smith. All right, so they've got a a sack analytic that the way it's explained is it is the one that gets the pressure first. Yes. He leads the NFL with 20 of them. So that's their sack analytic. It is the one that causes the disruption, and he leads the NFL. Okay. Um, If Zadarius Smith... And Preston Smith can get pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo and force him to make mistakes. And he can. He's above. He's not above that. Agreed. Uh, if they can do that, then they got a shot in this game. I just have a hard time. I have a hard time listening to all those stats because I know two of those games were against Mitchell Trubisky. And you and I could get pressure against him because he's terrible. Yeah, he definitely is. He's really bad. The other two games they got, they were against Kirk Cousins, who holds the football forever and ever and ever and ever. So, yeah, you're going to get pressure against those guys. Garoppolo and then whatever had, the hell the Lions had. Garoppolo had two touchdowns and zero picks in that game. The 49ers had one fumble but did not lose it. Jimmy G is the, the one that fumbled it. He did fumble. He just got it back. Yeah, he got That's it. why I didn't show up on those times. And so, yeah, that's it. But through the season, he has made mistakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so long as Green Bay is not the one to make mistakes, Green Bay can absolutely hang in this game. True. Well, but yeah, if they I, if they play a perfect football game, then sure, they can win the game. I don't but that's the, play a perfect but that's game. the problem. I don't want to bet on the team that has to play a perfect football game just to have a chance to win. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a world in which Green Bay plays a perfect football game. They still lose this game. Yeah, I mean it'd be by field goal, be by last second, whatever. But they could play almost perfect and still lose. If, the 49ers, if the 49ers could play average. Perfect. Oh, they play perfect. They win. Yeah. they win 100 percent of the time. Going away. Yeah, that's that's why I just don't want to be in that spot. That makes sense. The Chiefs could play a perfect football game and Derrick Henry just take the air out of the ball and they still find a way to lose. That game's different. That's why I'm struggling so much with that game. And I guarantee you, we record on Tuesdays. By Sunday kickoff, my mind will have changed five or six times. Yeah. yeah. I will not make a wager on this game. I might get a bad line by then, but I won't make a wager on this game until we're way closer to game time. I'm going to tell you this. But the, I, but the 49ers game, you're all in on the 49ers. I'm in now. Yeah. I'm in now. Um. What I'm probably going to end up doing is teasing the 49ers game in one of these sides. That makes sense. That's probably what I'm going to do. But the downside is is I don't know which side yet. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And if I think the Titans can win, I'm just going to do a money line parlay with the 49ers and the Titans. That, that would make sense. That would pay out the best. That works. All right. Anything else we need to hit on? No, man. I think I'm – listen, this is – this is championship weekend. Yeah. Yeah. We got uh we got two more weeks of NFL stuff to talk about and then uh and then once the Super Bowl's done, obviously we'll talk off season and whatnot, but you know I'm gonna miss the Super Bowl for the first time. I know you're in gonna my be life. in Disney. In my life. That's that's probably why the Patriots didn't make it. I know. I bet, said, I, I bet it is my fault. Bill this, said, you know what? Chris isn't coming. Chris Chris ain't gonna be watching at home with his Tom Brady doll and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Like he said, we we'll skip it this year. If if Tom leaves, I don't know what I'm doing with my doll. My action, my action figure. <laughs> hey, listen, you talk about that, but last night I had ambulance and trinkets, and 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 and, uh, and, and yeah. Yeah, but LSU's um, tali- no voodoo talismans man. everywhere. And, and it worked. you know what's cool? Everything I had was given to me, just like the Tom thing. Yeah, they're all gifts that people 
gave me over the years, just little knickknacks, and I had them all lined up on my table. How many people you have watching the game? Just two, just Fletchy and, and and Trey. Okay, okay. So Trey okay. was the throw in. Usually Fletchy's my my comfort buddy. That makes sense. I bring him around when I'm when I'm stressed out. <laughs> he's, he's like my service dog. He keeps me he keeps me company. Keeps me company. He's the uh, the emotional support animal. That's okay. right. I need him. Yeah, I definitely need an emotional support person. I care way too much about this stuff. It's stupid. It's so uh, stupid. I can understand. That's it. you. I remember you got really mad at me the first year that Alabama lost to Clemson because you, you didn't came over care, and I, I didn't I didn't let it phase me you didn't you we literally did a podcast five minutes later and it i it seemed like nothing in your life had changed at all and i don't know what that's like i don't know how to go through life like that well it, part so, of it part of the anger is a little bit of envy because i know it's i laid down in bed woke my wife up and and i couldn't sleep i'm just I'm breathing heavily and I'm, I'm my brain is moving a mile a minute and we had a small conversation about how pathetic is this that you're married to somebody who's 37 years old? I have a great life. I have a great business. I have a great family. And you let sports affect you. And I let like just a, it, not all sports, but a few things emotionally, like not just change. Yesterday I was useless. I, I actively went out of my way to do nothing productive. I guarantee you at all. If Orgeron wins like two or three more national championships over the next five, six years, uh, you think I'll get no because the Patriots have been in Super Bowls and that didn't matter. Really, we've been in nine Super Bowls See, and when we lost the Eagles Super Bowl, we didn't punt and I lost my mind. Yeah, I do remember that. I was that's, devastated. That's, that's the last time you let me watch a, a Patriots. Yeah, game you, you're not allowed it over anymore, which is crazy. You're, you're no longer. You know, no, no. Cameron will never be allowed back over again, <laughs> ever, 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 ever to watch a game that matters to me. That's I, I, I behaved. I know. I sat back no, you there. were great. You were uh, great. But yeah, it, it was just bad luck. That's but no, it, for me, like the the Alabama. And I fully stuff, believe that is the reason we lost. By the way, I <laughs> we didn't I'm, I'm just it was, as it's superstitious as you. It's my fault. It's That's, all my I've, fault. I've had a Trent Richardson jersey. Yeah, uh, that I've had for it's since the yeah. 2011 national championship game, and I wore it the weekend of the. So I, I wear it for every Alabama game, but I wore it to Tuscaloosa when we got beat by LSU this year. And then I didn't wear it the week after, and we were playing Western Carolina, something like that, and had a fantastic game and whatever. Um, and then I wore it again the next week, and we lost to a, in that Mississippi State game. And I haven't worn the jersey since, so the jersey is retired. That's uh, good, Trey Rich. I but I but I got to find a the new, new thing, a new thing now. Yeah. yeah, a new thing. So I almost went to an alumni party. For the national championship game, and the day of, I was my anxiety was too high. That that, that was not happening. Oh, but what I was saying is, oh yeah, like, sure. Before, um, before I, this this Alabama run started, that's how I was. Mm-hmm. Like every game was life or death, and it, it was before Saban. Yeah. So we were awful. Just imagine how rough I was be like I was to be around in the first few years of Saban. I was pretty rough to be around yeah. during ball games. I could not watch games with anybody else because I I did not know how to act. I could not control my emotions. My in my situation, the reason I watch them by myself, it's a me problem, not anybody else problem. Yeah. But I'm mature enough, as immature as I am, I'm mature enough to know I have this problem and I shouldn't leave the house with it. Yeah. I don't take that crap out in public. I do it alone in in the comfort of my house. My wife knows to hide our children. And leave me to my little little sunroom yeah, to your area and my my area and you know the dog is allowed to come in and out and that's kind of it. There you go. I when when it's <laughs> bedtime and I gotta kiss him good night. Wait until there's a break in the game. I run in, I say good night, and I'm getting out. And then you back out. So yeah, there you go. All right, official picks for the NFC and AFC title games. Uh, we both have the Titans plus seven and a half here. Uh, now remember, we're making this on Tuesday night, so the line might change, but. This is the way that we're looking at it. If you can get seven and a half, I think these or lines. Seven, are, I think these lines are gonna. I don't think that line is. I don't know that either of these lines are moving much. They, they may not. They may not. But it is Tuesday. We still got yeah, a we, whole lot. Yeah, we we can't predict anything. Um, but we both got the 49ers minus seven and a half. We got the Titans plus seven and a half. Um, I think the matchup everybody wants is probably. I think the matchup the networks want is Green Bay and Kansas City. 
Yeah, but that's but, they but, they would be disappointed with that game, by the way. They'd be well, yeah. disappointed with that game. They want that because the week building up, they can talk about Rodgers and Mahomes. But but I'm going to tell you, the matchup they want is the 49ers and the Chiefs. That that would be the better game. That will, yeah. that would be it because if you want an outstanding game for four and a half hours where everybody in the world is watching your TV and actually caring, that and here's what's so stupid. I don't understand why they care more about the name and the storylines beforehand and not so much about a quality of a game. Because the, it really bothers me that they don't care so much about the quality of the game. Well, because the the names involved bring in viewers. I disagree with the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl brings in the biggest numbers every year no matter what. Agreed, but if if you can like if you get Green Bay, it's going to give it a little bit of a bump. Okay. So let's say it's the 300,000 bump that yeah, but LSU. No, but, but, but Green you know Bay what I'm saying? Is, is worth like a couple three, four million I more. We, I, we completely disagree there because you're still getting an iconic franchise that has just a big of a national following in the 49ers. Maybe so. You've got your Bill Walsh and your Joe Montana's, and I guarantee you Joe Montana's at that game, Steve Young's, Jerry Rice's. You're going to bring yeah, all so. those guys out. I'm telling you, it's just as big, if not bigger, than Green Bay. It, 40, the 49ers have not been good in – Nope. Two decades? But that's what makes it matter. That's what makes it important, the fact that they haven't been there. I mean, you might be right. Because Aaron Rodgers is there every year, and guess what? Ever since he's won the Super Bowl, he's below 500 in playoff games. That's a good point. And that's that's, that's with this year's uh, win. That's with yeah. the win last week. He's still below 500. Yeah. Is what it is. We'll see. We will see. All right, that is going to wrap it up for the NFC and AFC title game previews and spread picks. Uh, you can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, make sure that you leave a nice review. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, the show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. You can find more information on all their sports books, their steakhouses, their golf courses, uh, the shows they got coming to town, everything else over at tunicatravel.com. Uh, we will see you guys again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.